Hi friends. Happy Tuesday. We are so happy to be here with you guys for our dream team chat. This is the third dream team chat in August, and we are moving and grooving with our sponsoring theme this month. We have really enjoyed this joints uh, promotion from Sensi, and that has really allowed our teams to grow this month. So clearly we are walking the walk and talking the talk. We are adding people to our teams. We are sponsoring. We're having these conversations and that is worth celebrating. And so I love that we're able to focus on that this month. We're going to keep going strong this month. Um, and continue to talk about sponsoring. We have a guest speaker today, which we're really excited about. But before we jump into that, Brianna and I thought it would be a good idea to just quickly talk about how important verbiage is when you're having these conversations. Um, a lot of times it is not who you're talking to, but the way that you're talking, right? The words that you're saying. And sometimes when I'm working with the teammates and they are having trouble sponsoring, I like to see what they're saying to their teammates. I like to see maybe a screenshot of the way that they're asking or the conversations they're having. I like to ask them, well, what are you asking? Because sometimes it really is just a simple shift in the things that you're saying, the way that you're asking these questions. And so so um, Bree and I have a list here of just some common um, phrases that people may say, and then some small shifts that you can make as you are having these conversations. And then Tammy, she's our guest speaker. She's going to come in and share what's working for her. Um, and we're so excited to hear from her too. But um, let's talk a little bit about verbiage, okay? Because I've been in business for almost eight years this fall, and I will say the way that I used to ask people to join or host has evolved in such a great way in these eight years. I remember um, when I first started sponsoring and I'll say I still did sponsor, but it was um, with much less confidence and also was probably scary for my new teammates because I was word vomiting on them. I was sending them so much info. Hey girl, have you ever thought about joining? You'd be a great consultant. It's only $99 to join. You get a warmer and bars and the new consultant kit. And it's only, you know, you only have to do 200 PRV every four months. And if you don't, and you can get free shipping and all, and, and you can hit the shooting star goal. And then you're halfway to certified. When you're certified, you get paid 25%. And like, literally, I probably scared half of the people I asked more than half of the people I asked, I probably scared them away. Um, it's just too much information, right? Um, I now lead with very small bits of information and then I answer questions. I feel like that has served me well. Um, and again, it's just a shift in the way that I'm asking. And so um, I'm just gonna share three different um, verbiage shifts with you guys. And just to get your wheels spinning on different ways that you can shift your conversations, okay? And if you relate to any of the don't say this column, don't feel bad at all. We all have to learn something somewhere. And that's what I love about Sensi. Um, I, I mentioned this earlier, but everything in Sensi is figure outable. You do not have to come into Sensi with these skills already figured out. You can learn and evolve and you should learn and evolve over time. Okay. Um, literally I learned something new every day. Like today I learned about boards, right? And so every day is a great day to learn something new for your business and you're always evolving. So let's dive right in with the first shift. Um, so instead of saying something like it's our busiest selling season, which can seem really scary to a new consultant. It's our busiest selling season. Like that can be very overwhelming from the start before they even click the join button to know that they're jumping into the busiest selling season. And I'll say like, I'm not perfect. I have said this. I have said like, oh, we're jumping it. We're getting ready for our busiest time of year. But if you think about it, yeah, that could possibly scare some people away because they're not ready to just like jump into rushing waters, right? They might want to just get their toes wet. And so you could just shift very simply by saying it's our best selling season, right? Um, or we have so many amazing new products coming. I know that you'll have customers that love this stuff, right? So instead of scaring them by telling them it's the busiest season, encouraging them because it's the best season or we have lots of fun things coming. So to me, that's a very simple shift, but makes a lot of sense. Okay, this one I think applies to all of us and is super beneficial if we can shift on this one. Do you want to host a party? Okay, 
I think Tupperware kind of like hurt us back in the day. And so now when people think of direct sales parties, they think of like old school 80s direct sales parties. Okay. Um, or I think some other more like predatory companies back in like 2015 ish um, really hurt us in the name of parties. And so I feel like people are afraid of doing parties for us. And so um, this is where themed things can get really fun. Um, do you want to have a margarita party? Do you want to have a girl's night in? Do you want to have a brunch? Do you want to have a fright? Uh, fragrance flower coloring party? Do you want to have a favorite t-shirt party? Do you want to have a cookie swap party, right? Do you want to have a costume party? Because Halloween is right around the corner. Um, that's really fun. Um, some things that I've been saying is I'd love to do a fall catalog showcase for you and your friends, right? It's not a party. It's just a fall catalog showcase. We can do it a brunch or a girl's night in. That's really what I've been saying. Okay. It takes the word party out of it. Of course, I'm substituting it with showcase, but it still kind of takes the sting off of what those expectations are, right? You can even say something like, do you want to get a few girlfriends together to smell some testers? That totally takes the pressure off of them. And it lets them know, hey, I just need like three or four people. Like we don't even have to do a big party. You don't have to do any like, um, you know, buying food and getting ready. Like just invite your neighbor, your coworker and your mom over and like, let's sit together and smell some testers. That's pretty fun to me. And you'll find that you'll get some good sales that way too. Okay. And so it's just all about the different ways that you can offer getting together. And I promise you guys, whatever way you can get those testers under people's noses. You don't even have to take a big bag of products. Testers in a catalog with maybe the, the Scentsy items that you keep in your purse and in your car is enough, okay? Today, I met up with the customer and I brought a hand cream, mini fan pods, some testers, and some wax bars with a showcase brochure, okay? It all fit in a tiny little lunchbox. And that's really all you need, okay? Um, so don't put the pressure on yourself or on your customers. I really like the um, difference of words just simply by asking for different types of parties or get togethers and things like that. Okay. The last one I think is really important, especially with, for me, the last one for me, Bree's got some to share too, but um, this one I think is really important for setting expectations for your new teammates. Okay. Um, saying that you don't need time because you absolutely do need time to work a business. This business does not just fall in your lap. Um, you're going to give these people a wrong impression that, that this business is just so easy that sales just fall into their lap without doing anything at all. And that's just simply not true. Okay. Um, so what you can say is that busy people make the best consultants. Busy people are around more people, giving them more opportunity to sell. Since he can fit in the nook and crannies of your everyday life, you can fit since into your everyday life. Those statements are true, but it is still requiring work. Okay. Um, busy people make the best consultants. That is true. Okay. Um, some of the best and most high performing consultants in our community are extremely busy and they're not just busy with Cincy. They're busy with life and obligations. Okay. And so that is a real advantage to a lot of people because we are all very busy. Okay. But don't, don't use their busyness as a selling point by saying that they don't need time because they still need time to work their business. Okay. So just shift it and encourage them that with their time, they can still be successful. Okay. Um, and again, just like a little um, side note here, when I have new consultants joining or people interested, I like to ask them, um, how many hours in a week do you think that you would be able to like be working in your Cincy business? This gives me a really good idea of like how to best approach their training and their action steps as far as me being their sponsor. So someone tells me they only have like two hours a week to work their business. Okay, you can absolutely still get some stuff done in those two hours. But I know that when she or he is looking for guidance on what to do with those two hours, I need to make it like the most bang for their time. Okay, the most income producing and um, result driven in those two hours. Those tasks may look different from someone who says they have 10 hours to work their business a week, right? You might be able to like pace yourself and do it daily. And so um, this is where being a sponsor 
it's really important to kind of know what you're working with, with your new recruits, but certainly don't um, take their time and tell them that they don't need it because they do need their time. And time is valuable. Time is a very precious resource that people have. And so it's good to be honest and upfront about that, that this business is not um, easy, but it is simple. And and they may be busy, but busy people make great consultants. So um, those are some of my verbiage swaps for you. I know Brie has a few for you guys as well. Okay. So, um, yes. And I feel like these are going to tie into, um, a lot of what Alex was saying, but are, they are things that we are, deal with and have to recognize that the verbiage and all of this matters. And so the next one is join my team. Um, and Michelle posted the graphic in the chat, which I really appreciate because this is not me and Alex's work. This is just something that we saw, but I'm actually going to change what they said because I don't, love that. However, it is something that you can obviously use. And so um, what I like to say, I don't, I don't like to say join my team because I don't want to make it about me. It's not about join my team. Don't, don't come for, you know, my benefit or don't come join, you know, my people, whatever. Um, I, I just don't say that. Um, I always say, I shouldn't say always, it really depends on the conversation. And this is why relationships matter. And this is why, um, knowing, knowing the relationship and knowing how the Sensi business would benefit them, making it about them is so important. Um, but if I am just asking somebody like, um, a new person that I just met and I'm not sure what Sensi would be to them, but I think that at some level they would be a good consultant or if it's a customer and I'm just trying to open that door to the join conversation. My favorite line is, have you ever thought about doing what I do? Right. And um, because I like that, even though it's like, have you ever thought about doing what I do? Um, I love it because majority of the time people will say yes and then they'll give you their fear they'll give you the give you their reason why they haven't done it yet and so you can get really good at your excuse busting in that sense um because then they'll tell you why they haven't yet and then you can um have a very open conversation about you know why being busy is actually a good thing in this business or um you know whatever their reasoning may be. I can't think of it the top of my head, but my favorite go-to line is, have you ever thought about doing what I do? Now there's various things that you can say um, to your, um, to the people who you're having conversations with. For instance, I, um, a customer texted me today asking about a scent. She said she needed to get some new bars of it. And so she was getting ready to place an order. And I said, Hey, I, before you do that, I do want to follow up because I know that we've had this conversation before. Are you still considering um, becoming a consultant? And if so, like, what's stopping you now? And we actually had like a really great conversation and she, I think she's going to join tomorrow. So like, um, you know, knowing that relationship, keeping track of the people that you've been talking to and really making it about them um, and getting good at excuse busting is um, the key there. Okay. And then the last one is um, something that I used to say, but I recognize that it's not true. And it kind of goes back to what Alex was saying earlier, that we just assume that things will happen and we don't have to do anything. Um, and it's that the products sell themselves. Okay. Who's ever said that products sell themselves. You don't, you don't even have to do anything. Like everybody knows since everybody loves since and it's like, okay, the, most people do love Sensi, and a lot of people do know what Sensi is, but the products do not sell themselves. Okay. I'm not swimming in orders just because, um, I shared a picture of a warmer or something. Right. Um, and so we do, like Alex mentioned, we do have to set proper expectations and we do have to be reasonable with people when they're looking at the opportunity. We don't want to, we don't want to bring them into this business under false pretenses, Right. We don't want to be the people who bait and switch and say one thing and say that, um, you know, the products sell themselves and you um, you don't really need time to work this business because it just magically happens. We don't want to be those people because that's not true. We have to work 
right? And it's fun and it's enjoyable and, and we love it and we've got community and stuff, but you do have to work this business. And so um, something that you can say is all you have to do is get your get our products into people's hands. They're really super great, right? People fall in love with the products once they smell it, once they see it in person, right? Or once they experience it, right? Or um, once you share what you're loving, people will be interested in knowing more about it right? But it's not something that is just, it just happens just because there is effort that you have to put into it. Um, and we need to be realistic in telling our people, our new consultants or our potential new consultants, we have to be realistic in that because we don't want them to turn around and say, okay, well, I posted a picture of a warmer and you said it was going to sell itself. And here I am two weeks later and I don't have any, you know, orders for it. Okay. So um, teaching them how to share the products consistently, um, take the products places, share the sensey life, get the sense under people's noses and um, sharing the experience is super important. Okay. So um, that is it for that. If you have others, please feel free to share. Please feel free to um um, post them in the group or share them here or whatever, but it is a, uh, really interesting idea. And I think it's totally on point that we do have to watch what we're saying to people. Um, because it can literally be the reason why things work out now versus, you know, two weeks ago or a month ago or a year ago, like changing up how you're doing something can really be a game changer. So, all that to say, I'm so glad Tammy is jumping on with us tonight because I feel like totally tongue twisted for some reason. I don't know what it is, but um, our guest speaker for tonight is, um, she is not my front line. She is just my, just, she is my downline, but she is a literal rock star, you guys. I posted that she earned top 50 for sponsoring with um, this last incentive. So she literally gets to go to leadership in January on the cruise for free. Um, she is one of the people who flies under the radar, doesn't doesn't say a whole lot uh, to me, uh, you know, and, uh, but she just is doing, she has her head down and she's working you guys. And we wanted her to come on tonight to talk about sponsoring because we looked at some of her statistics. Okay. And since she joined in February of 2021, she has personally sponsored 22 people and she's got 18 frontline right now. Right. So only a couple people, but um, have, have fallen off, but 22 people. So that's incredible. And, um, she just, she is busy. She's got a full-time job and she is absolutely incredible. And so Tammy's going to come on, give us her best tips for sponsoring. So please welcome Tammy. Okay. Can you hear me? Awesome. Okay. So, um, yeah, actually what, what you guys um, talked about um, little bits and pieces of that is kind of what I'm going to cover as well. Um, but like Bree said, I work full time. I am a teacher. So first day of school is tomorrow. Um, I've enjoyed my summer off and being able to really um, invest a little bit more time in my business. But um, full time work starts tomorrow. My husband works full time. We um, own two cabins about an hour and a half away from us that we rent out as Airbnb rentals. So we've got that business going. I've got my Sensi business. We have our two boys who are involved in sports and activities and things like that. So we are super busy people. Um, but just like she said, I feel like if you're focusing on the right things and just kind of put your head down and manage your time, um, you can you can do a lot with Sensi. Um, and so I, like Bree said, I have sponsored 22 people in the last two and a half years. And um, I don't say that to like brag or anything. I, I didn't even know that until today when I looked it up. And honestly, when I was asked to come and speak to you guys, I did not think that I was going to be asked to talk about sponsoring because I never thought that that was something that I was strong at. But it kind of caused me to reflect a little bit. And, um, you know, I'm not that terrible at it. I, I feel like, you know, I, 
I do all right. So I'm just going to share some things that have worked for you or for me that hopefully will work for you as well. And um, the first thing that I want to share with you guys that when I was looking at the people that I have sponsored is that every single person on my list, and I have my little list of people right here, <laughs> every single person on my list, except for one, I have had some kind of relationship with them. And so um, it, it, could, it could have been a friendship from before I started Sensi, somebody who's been in my life um, prior to Sensi, it could be a customer that I acquired through Sensi and met along my journey. But every single person except for one, I had a I had some sort of relationship with. So my first big, huge, and probably what I think is the most important tip is to build relationships with people. That's what's worked for me. And um, you know, they're not going to join your team overnight, but in the long run, they will. Um, and just some things that I do to build those relationships is, you know, when I get a new customer, um, I, I try to make sure that I reach out to them, that I try to get to know them, that I learn about them and their family, their likes, their dislikes, what they do in their spare time. Like, I don't want anybody just to feel like, they're just a sale to me because I wouldn't want to feel that way. I, I, when I support somebody else's business, I feel good because I'm supporting a small business and just a simple, like, thank you. And sometimes I'll get things in the mail too, happy mail from other people. And even though like I send out happy mail and I'm like, Oh, are my people even going to like this? When I get it, it makes me feel good that I'm supporting that person. And so that's all part of building the relationship. So I really spend a lot of time investing in those relationships, making people feel special um, and not like they're just a sale that I truly appreciate them. And I want to get to know them and make them my friend if they're not already my friend. Um, so that would be my biggest tip. And um, I don't have like any my, I don't have any words or like verbiage or anything like that, that I specifically use or like are my go-tos or anything like that. Um, I, when I'm sponsoring people, um, it's through most of the time, it's through just natural conversation. And so I have a few examples because I'm, I'm a type of person where I, I want to see the conversation um, that was successful for somebody else, not so I can copy it, but just so I can get an idea of how to insert Sensi into the conversation and then try to like plant the seed to, you know, be uh, some at some point join my team. Um, so I'm going to share just a few examples of how I have brought Sensi up casually to a few people who either are currently on my team or have joined my team in the past and are still here or may have dropped off. Um, just to give you guys some, like those real life examples of, of what's worked for me through building relationships with people. So the first person I'm going to talk about is, um, one of my friends that I've known for quite a while. She, um, she was actually my husband's friend and I met, um, her through him. She was, um, in my wedding and she doesn't live near us anymore. Um, they, they live in Vegas. Um, and we don't talk, you know, one on one all the time, but she reached out to me one time because they were looking into buying a home and she had some questions and because she knows about our cabin, our cabin purchases and some home purchases that we've done and we've helped family members buy homes and things like that. She had some questions for me and she was like a little bit nervous about whether or not they should go through with it because it was a little bit outside of their budget. And she was afraid that they wouldn't have enough money to cover um, their their new mortgage payment should they get this house. And so we had just recently moved and I was just telling her, you know, like that's our concern all the time. You know, when we bought our cabins and when we moved to a bigger home, like, are we going to be able to afford this? It is out of our, our current budget. And so I was just telling her that, yeah, it might 
might be hard at first, but you'll grow into that payment. And then I commented that there's a ton of ways you can make money. And all I did is I put in parentheses, hello, Sensi. And then I continued the conversation. And out of everything that I had responded to her about, she responded back to the part about Sensi and was like, hey, tell me more about Sensi. Like how much, you know, how much money can I make? How does it work? What's the percentage? And so I kind of broke it down for her and she joined. And that was, that like came like out of the blue. I mean, she was my customer, but she also was my friend and she called, she contacted me to talk about something completely different. And I just naturally threw it in there. And I think because of the relationship and the trust was there and she knew I, you know, that I was doing well with Sensi and setting that example, I guess you can say, um, that she just joined. And so um, that's just one example. Um, another example I'll share is somebody that I didn't know. Um, I had met this person I was, it was my very first in-person like vendor event um, pop-up. I was so nervous. I'm naturally an introvert, you guys. <laughs> so it's hard for me to talk to people that I don't know. Um, it's very uncomfortable for me to talk to people that I don't know. Once I get to know you, I'm, I'm fine. But for me to go to a place and set up a booth and be forced to talk to people that I don't know, it, like that did not sound like fun to me. And in fact, I brought my son who was more extroverted, who was, he must've been 11 at the time. And he was approaching people for me. <laughs> and so um, this group, this family was walking by our booth and I just, you know, was saying hi. And then he, his little line to get people to come to our booth was, hey, do you like your house to smell good? And so this boy, 11 year old boy asking this family that the mom turned around and was like, yes, yes I do. And so she came into our booth. She started talking to my son. My son was the one really talking to her, but through the, um, the conversation, you know, I was able to answer questions about specific um, products that she was interested in. I was able to get her information um, to place an order for her. And then because I had her information, I can, you know, continue the relationship. So when her order came in, I met her to drop it off. I invited her to my VIP group. She continued to be my customer. She had a party for me. I actually asked her, at, in, in closing her party, if she wanted to take advantage of the hostess kit. And she said, no. And I could have like been super discouraged and like, you know, oh, she's not interested anymore or whatever. Um, but I just continued to nurture that relationship. And a few months later, she joined my team. And so I feel like also going for the no or being okay with the no, like is huge because at first, I was afraid of that rejection. Um, but then I don't know where I watched a training. I'm really big at watching training, too. Um, I don't know if it was in the Dream Team group or somewhere else. But somebody had said that when somebody tells you no, it's okay, at least you planted the seed. And so I, I just kept telling myself that, well, it's okay. She said no. Like I was happy with that because my seed had been planted. <laughs> so it was all about just watering that seed and continuing to nurture that seed. And she's still a consultant on my team. And one of, you know, my top PRV people, she probably has the biggest team underneath me. And so I met her um, at a vendor event, didn't know her at all. And um, offered her the opportunity after closing out a party, got a rejection, continue to nurture the relationship, and then she eventually joined my team. Um, so that's example number two. And then uh, my third example is um, a former student of mine is her, his parent, his mom. So um, and at work, I am not trying to be like, 
recruiting people at all. I am not even trying to really sell anything because I don't want to like become like the person that is soliciting to everybody at work. But I do bring Scentsy into my classroom and people come in my classroom and smell it and want it. And then I'm also, you know, uh, friends with people on Facebook, Instagram, and put stuff in my stories and everything. So they see it and then they ask me about it. Um, so anyway, back to this other person. She is a, a parent of one of my students that I had in my class um, several years ago. She um, would come in and she would check on her student almost daily because he struggled with a couple of different things. So she was constantly checking in on him. She was helping me in the classroom which we don't get a lot of help these days. So when we do, it's really nice. So through that, we um, ended up becoming friends on Facebook. And then um, we just, you know, stayed in touch even when he moved on um, and wasn't my student anymore at, through Facebook. And so then when I became a consultant, um, she came to my, my virtual launch party on Facebook. She became my customer. Again, I nurtured that relationship um, as her as my customer because her son had moved on to the next grade by this by this time. And then um, probably about a year later, um, she was looking to make some extra money to help her family. Um, and so that's when we started talking about Sensi. It, because she had stated that she needed some extra money to support her family. And I was like, well, you really love Scentsy. Have you ever thought about being, being a consultant and just making money off of your purchases? And then she was like, oh. And then she thought about it for a few days. And then, well, it was probably about a week. And a week later, she came back and, and joined my team. So those are just three examples of the many that um, that have join my team and I feel like it's primarily because of building the relationship with them and just asking and if they say no that's okay um because I I planted my my seed and I know that if I continue to nurture it then eventually they're going to join my team like that's my mindset <laughs> um and pretty much I mean most of the time that that's what happens if I um am, am consistent with it so um, let's see, is there anything else? Oh, overcoming objections. I, I, I feel like people are going to say, I, like most of these people have said no to me. The ones that I have approached, most of them have said no to me. And so, like I said, I tell myself, okay, you planted the seed. So what were, what were they afraid of? Um, kind of like Brie was saying, what are they, why are they saying no? And so like, once you can kind of pinpoint that, pinpoint that then in the future when you're um, connecting and building that relationship, and then you have another conversation with them later down the road, because they, they, they'll probably bring it up again themselves. If it's money, if they don't have time, if they feel like they don't have anybody to sell to, whatever it is, they'll express it to you. And then you can kind of share like, well, how you deal with that. You know, if somebody says they're busy, I'm like, yeah, I know <laughs> I'm busy too, but I don't, I just don't, you know, allow that to be my excuse, I guess. Um, so anyway, just kind of listen to what they're saying and um, be present with them and, and take that into consideration when you're having future conversations with them. And then also like when you're um, posting on social media and things like that, whether it's in your VIP group or Instagram or TikTok or whatever you use, um, I feel like just being really authentic. Um, and if, if somebody does say that it's because of the money, then I might, I might post something like about that somehow in my VIP group. Um, or if it's that they want to have friendships with people, then I might post something about, you know, how I'm building friendships through Sensi or whatever it is. I kind of listen to their feedback to, to give me ideas um, on some things to post sometimes, but also just to keep those little nuggets for future conversation. And then the last tip I have um, is expanding your network constantly. So 
Um, I do this not only to continue to get high PRV every month, um, but also so that I have a pool of people that I can pull from um, to try to sponsor. Um, and I've heard before, you know, I don't want to lose my best customers. Like, I don't want them to become a consultant because I don't want to lose my best customers. But to me, like, I want them to be on my team because they are my best customers because I know they love the product, they're passionate about it, and I feel like it'll be easy for them to share it and pe for people to buy from them. Um, and and I'm still gaining from that. Um, so if I know that I'm, well, it's not really if I know, I know that I'm gonna lose some of my best customers. I just lost one of my best customers last night because she joined my team. Um, but, if you're constantly expanding your network and making those new connections and you constantly have an inflow of people. And so when they join your team, it's okay. You're not going to miss out on PRV because you have new people coming in. So those are just a few tips that I had jotted down. Um, so just to summarize um, relationships, I feel are the, the biggest one. Um, so that you can plant those seeds in natural, authentic conversations when they come up. Um, and then use those conversations to help over overcome the objections that they may have and then expanding your network. And um, just one more thought is, you know, sponsoring for me um, hasn't always been easy. It's, it's not easy, you know, to, when you're an introverted person um, trying to ask people to become a consultant or whatever. Um, but once you start to do it, you'll get a little bit better and a little bit better and more comfortable with it. And you'll be okay with hearing that no. And also realize just like, you know, our sales kind of ebb and flow. I feel like sponsoring is the same way. Um, I I went, gosh, I probably went at least four months without having anybody join my team um, just recently. Um, and then all of a sudden, I think it was in March, six people joined my team. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, how can I manage all six of these people? I, I'm working full time. Like, how I... It was a struggle, but I, like, I'm not going to lie. It was a struggle to like get them in and train and launch parties and all the things. But I feel like I had built the relationship since Christmas probably, or even prior, like November, December, I built the relationship with them, got to know them. And these, most of these people are people I've never met before in real life. They're people I met virtually in virtual vendor, vendor groups and, and stuff like that. But they became my customer. I built the relationship. And I feel like when, uh, I think it was March when it was $25 to join. So when that hit, they all just took advantage of it. And so just realize that there might be ebbs and flows um, with sponsoring, just like, you know, sometimes it is with our PRV and our sales. Um, so that's it. That's all I have. I hope that was helpful to somebody. And thank you for having me.